Hello, everybody. So, I did a thing a little bit of a week ago where I showed off some stuff that you should buy for Black Friday or keep an eye on. I bought one of them. It was a great idea. Before we get on to that, don't forget to like the video if you like the video, subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget, I stream on Twitch every Sunday and Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hope to see you there. So, last week I showed off a keyboard. It's not too abnormal. I love tech and I love showing off tech. I showed off the EVGA Z15. 17. 17. Um, I've already opened this um, and I didn't show the unboxing most because I wanted to see everything about this and then talk to you guys about it. So, first things first, comes with the rest rest, it's hard plastic, I, I don't care for that. However, it is magnetic, it attaches to the bottom of the keyboard along the side magnetically, which is really cool to me. It also comes with a keycap puller, if you ever want to change out your keycaps, which is a completely normal thing when it comes down to gaming. People like to personalize their stuff, but you can also switch out your mechanical switches. That's huge. This is a $50 keyboard. It's very unheard of, to me at least, to find a good keyboard that does this. So that caught my attention it, to get onto that video and into this one for me to buy it myself. Also with this, and I didn't actually completely know this was gonna happen, I think I remember looking at the description, something they mentioning about them sending this with it, but um, and I also sent eight switches. By the way, um, I love good packing material, love this dense foam, like, can you, see how hard I'm trying to press into this? Like, it takes some effort. So here's the switch. I don't know if you're supposed to touch the bottom of these. I don't really, but um, this I believe is their clicky switch. So if you guys are into clicky, go for these. I'm not so much. I like a quieter one. They didn't have a tactile one. Otherwise I would have bought that. So I got the linear and linear will sound like this. Other things about the keyboard himself, they have four multimedia keys, a mute, fast forward, go backwards, pause and start, as well as a spin wheel for volume, scrolling down pages, things like that. Also a braided cable there. It is a non-removable cable, so you can't remove this cable, which is kind of sad to me because I would like to change this out if I were to keep this and use it for something. Not sure yet. Um, let's see how much flex it has. Oh, that's pretty good. I, I can't get any. Why is this 50 bucks? And this is pretty good. It's wired, so I guess that does make it a little cheaper. A lot of people are going to wire this, so it's popular and also it's harder to implement without any kind of lag. It is also a full keyboard it has that number keypad which I don't like um, my Logitech G915 is a 10 keyless so it doesn't have that number key there which sometimes I miss because I use those at work so occasionally it does help <laughs> so what I'm gonna do here I'm gonna take out that key switch real quick so um, so you know Right here, if I can get this to focus on it, that is where you need to put down your little prongs to get it to get the key out. The front and the back of the key, when it's facing away from you or towards you, not the two, not the sides. Which actually, I would have thought that's what it would have been when I did this the first time. Um, taking out this switch, we're going to replace it. With this one, I want to hear the difference between those two without turning this on yet, because we're going to do a 
separate part of this video for the RGB itself and any other features this has because there is some software it looks like. I imagine it's mostly just for the RGB controlling. Um, but we'll get to that. So, clicky, non-clicky. This would be the linear switch, by the way. Clicky, linear. The multimedia keys seem to be a membrane. But not too bad. I would say. Hmm. Oh, I thought. Tell me if you guys notice something here. Now let's put it up against my Logitech, which I've turned off so that it doesn't mess with anything while I'm doing this. I'm gonna have to go back and hear that myself too, but to my ears right now, there sounds to be a slight difference. I would say the Logitech's much quieter, which that could be having to do with the fact that it's a low profile keyboard, which is a little hard to do. I'm very happy with it. I do love it. Logitech is a beautiful brand when it comes to the keyboards and the other peripherals I use from them. I basically only use Logitech peripherals. If you've watched my videos, you would know that. Honestly, this is a good keyboard for 50 bucks though, because if you're trying to get into customizing your own keyboard, basically going to show you this one. This is 50 bucks. I'm highly impressed with it so far. Um, I'm going to probably use it tomorrow, which is also when I'm going to go through the software and see how that is. I think, well, I'll enjoy that part. We'll see though. You never know. I am. Oh, I should probably look at this. Is there only one? Oh, cool. Good. There are two heightened levels. There's the big foot there. There's a smaller foot. No feet. I'm not going to change out the switches. I'm sorry. I will do that, however, sometime down the road once I get materials together, as well as a decent amount of know-how on how to do it. Because I've watched a couple of videos of other people do it. I don't feel comfortable doing it yet. Random Frank P, I've seen Bitwit do it. It was his first time though, and he's probably at least slightly smarter than I am. Random Frank P is significantly smarter than me. I would definitely, if you're looking to look into that, look at those two guys' videos on custom keyboards, and I'm sure you'll learn light years of knowledge. Light years of knowledge. What am I, Buzz Lightyear? I'm sure you will learn a lot of things before even, I'm sure you'll learn a lot of things from them than you would watching my videos where I'm probably going to break something in like the next 15 to 20 minutes. Um, let's get started on that software and it should be some fun. Alrighty, so first thing you need to do is go to EVGA's website you go to the EVGA Unleash. I'll have three separate downloads. From the seams of it, it kind of depends on what item you buy, on what version of Unleash software you need, which is a little weird to me because what if I have this mouse and this keyboard? Well, that means I need to have both these softwares. Um, that's a lot of bloatware, a lot of bloating for your system to have. And the more RGB controls you have to have in your computer, it does slow down the performance. Keep that in mind. But you want this one, click that, takes you to the download center, and you just need to press download. Out of the box, you will have a firmware update for the Z17, Z15. Um, it's mostly just apparently some kind of a function key bug issue from what it seems right here, but 
not a huge deal. Let's just jump right into the software now. Software looks actually pretty good to me at least. Um, I don't know what's going on, what some of these things are completely myself because I haven't tried everything on this. However, it does look interesting. Um, you can configure keys, change the report rate, how long it changes that to minute. It is set out of the box to five minutes. I think 15 is not a horrible place. That's about the normal time for a decent YouTube video. <clears throat> At least that is a good pause time for me. It is preference. You can set this to however you'd like. There is a game mode for disabling keys, window key, app key, L shift, alt F4, control escape, tab, alt tab. You can turn off all of those. I don't completely know what all those do, so don't worry about that. Then there's lighting effects. Out of the box, it is set to the spiral rainbow. You can do clockwise or even counterclockwise. There's also zones. You get nine profiles. Um, that you can set however you'd like. You are capable of custom making RGB. Um, I, I don't really see a point in doing custom stuff unless you're really, really into this. You can change the speed as well. So if I wanted this to be quite fast and that's how I do it now it's showing it on this but being how this is going it doesn't look exactly like that on the EVGA keyboard it is decently close I would call this to be a little kludgy in the way on how this is showing what the keyboard actually is doing but that's not a big deal so let's set that back to 50 there is also a static, a breathing, a pulse, a rainbow wave, which I think honestly is a very cool one to me. Star shining, and then also a trigger. Trigger sounds how it sounds. Press one button, you get a different reaction depending on the colors. I think it's kind of cool. You can also set it to grid by three by three or to only do the one key. To me, when it comes down to the trigger, I would do the typing lightning where it just goes through the entire keyboard. There are also key assignments for primary or secondary. Um, you can really set this to be any of these, to be honest. Um, there are macro keys you can make. There's also a macro editor. So all in all, I'd call the EVGA app a pretty decent app. Definitely has some areas that it could be better. For instance, I don't really, hello. I did change that to 15, you guys saw that, right? Okay, so I get it now. I have to press apply on any changes I do. If I don't, as soon as I leave that area, it's not keeping it, so let's make sure. No? Hello? Okay, now it does it. I don't know why that worked. I don't know what happened. Don't really care either. But that is something you guys should be aware of. Apparently, sometimes it won't save your settings. Alrighty, so... That is the EVGA Z15 as it is right now. Like I said earlier, I am planning to customize this a little bit. Um, have any ideas on that, leave a comment below. I'll definitely look into it. But I would call this the end of the video. Thank you guys for tuning in. Don't forget to like the video if you liked the video, subscribe to the channel. Also don't forget, I stream on Twitch every Sunday and Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hope to see you there. Thanks again for tuning in guys, and have a good day.